This is Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii, and I'm here with Bella and Andrea. Andrea. And you're both from Reno, Nevada. Right. And so I've got to ask the question uh, about an hour and a half, two hours ago, an incoming message from the state of Hawaii, emergency management, said that there's incoming ballistic missiles. This is not a drill. Did you get that message? We did. We did get that message. Yes. And how did you feel and what were your thoughts? We were surprised um, at first, and then the kids started going into a panic, texting everybody, and then we had step parents calling us, wanting to know what was going on, freaking out about what, where we were at and what we were doing and how we were doing it. Um, so it was very scary for us. Bella, what was going through your mind when this first came through? Well, I hopped out of bed right away, and I started packing all my stuff because I was freaking out, and I didn't know what to do. What did it feel like when you were freaking out? I feel like I'm going to explode, like, ugh. like, I feel like a thousand things are going through my mind and stuff, like. Andrea, before I set up the camera here, you said you were uh, upset, you weren't happy. No. Tell me a little bit about that. I just feel like it's unacceptable to throw their, the state in the, such a frenzy the way that it did. And for us as visitors, when our last leg of our trip here, unacceptable. Um, for someone to have pushed a button and for that button to be accessible by one person as it was stipulated on the news today, I feel that that was completely unacceptable. Um, there should have been a dual control or, a, you know, three people that have to push the same button to access and alert uh, that magnitude. Now, this went off approximately very early around 8 o'clock. The correction messages that actually eventually came on TV uh, wasn't for another 25 minutes or so. Right. We, at that point, were already in the um, valet part of the, of the hotel that we were staying at with everybody freaking out and crying and screaming and yelling. And Did you see people in the lobby? Yeah, there was tons of people in the and lobby. And what, what, were, what were they doing and what were their reactions? Um, they were trying to get the answers. So they were asking the bellhops, they were asking people of the hotel, is this, is this happening? Is this real? And what we were told from the hotel was that, yes, it was real. It has never happened before. Um, and to listen, you know, we're being yelled at to listen to commands and to listen to what they were telling us to do, which was to get to safety in the valet portion of the hotel at the bottom. So this was well in advance or before there was an announcement that this was a fake drill. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. Bella, I ask you a question. This is the first time this has ever happened for a lot of people here in Hawaii, and this is your first time experience. Um, do you have any thoughts about that? I mean, it was really scary because, like, I've never been through anything like this. And, like, yeah, I didn't know what to do. Were you glad you were here with your mom? Yeah. Oh, that's good. So if you had a message to the governor of the state, because eventually all this does fall under his his authority. Sure. you have a message for the governor of the state of Hawaii? I would just say, you know, I, I know that they're doing what they need to do to find out what happened, and I'm assuming that they probably already know what happened, because I can't imagine it would take hours for them to to uh, find the answers to that. I would just, you know, I'm sure they understand that, that it did create a panic, but it was sounds like it was an unnecessary one. So to the state, I would say, you know, um, be mindful of what happens and, and also know that we're also mindful of what's happening in our world and our surroundings to know that this Potentially, if it was a, an accident, it potentially could have not have been an accident. It could have been something, a real threat to us. And I think that we all take it very seriously. Were there any thoughts in your mind about this going even further on a national level? Maybe someone in the national federal government took this as something as serious and possibly could react to it? That's exactly what we thought. I mean, with all the news lately, we thought, um, shoot, you know, here we go. You know, all that missile testing and all those things that we hear from North Korea and things like that. But now it's happening. You know, the first thing that ran through my mind is I thought this has to be real because we've been in talks and there's been a lot of things on the news that scares us as the public. So, um, you know, as a parent, we do what's what we can do. And I felt, we, for, as a parent, we felt very hopeless, you know, very helpless to our children to be able to do anything. We kept looking at the seas and watching the the seas in front of us being patrolled by, um, what's it called, the um, Coast Guard. So we saw several of those out there. So, you know, it even caused more panic because we thought, oh, yeah, this has to be real because the Coast Guard is out there. So anyways, just it was very frantic for us and very unacceptable. If it was someone that had pushed a button on accident, unacceptable. You had mentioned dual control. I think that's a very, very good point. And um, it doesn't seem like maybe there was a lot of dual control before this message hit the um, emergency management system. Well, they said on the news this morning that there was one person that hit a button in error. Um, you buy that? Absolutely not. 
not at all. You don't think that's true? I don't believe it, not for one minute. And if it's true, that's pathetic. If it's true, and, and only one person could push a button, it seems like they're going to have to take 10 steps back and uh, reorganize a lot of things. Absolutely. They mentioned it being one person that set off the um, alarms to all of the cell phones, but we watched it on the news. We watched the, the warnings on the news that said to get to higher ground, to seek shelter on the news itself. Um, and so it wasn't just cell phones that was um, affected. I mean, we watched it. I have video of it on my phone of where it was on the TVs telling us to seek shelter. Uh, so uh, that was a big button for someone to push. What was the reaction of people in the lobby area? What was, What were they doing? What were they saying? Were they upset? Were they agitated? Uh, I think it was a little, it was a mix of everything. Um, there was people crying, there was people scared, there were people asking questions, um, people that weren't hearing the answers to those questions, so other people were yelling the answers back uh, to other people. The elevators were full, you know, so we had people going down the stairs into the lobby itself. We were on the 14th floor, um, and we couldn't get an elevator to come up to us. Um, so just a lot of move, get out of the way. Um, horrible. It was horrible. And as a visitor, you know, will we come back? Of course we will, because we come back for the island. But if we were to come back and had to have anything to do with the government or how things are run, I mean, I can tell you, we, we would probably think twice before coming back to a state like that that allows one person access to a button that can cause panic at the scale. Andrea, Bella, I want to thank you very much for spending your time. We're sorry that this day was kind of ruined for you, but hopefully it'll get better. And uh, we appreciate all the tourists that come to our island and, and enjoy our, our, our aloha and our beautiful paradise. So thank you for coming and sharing your thoughts. I'm Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha.